Hello from home and welcome wherever you are. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. We're so excited to have you here. I am Lindsay Irvine, Chief Marketing Officer of MuleSoft and your host for today. I am incredibly excited to be here because we have an amazing show lined up. But just before we dive in, the most exciting part of any presentation, the forward-looking statement. So today you may hear about new product innovations, but please make your purchasing decisions based on currently available products and services. And with that, let's dive in with a quick, quick sneak peek of what you're going to see in today's show. We have an amazing show lined up. You're going to hear from Brett Taylor, our president and chief operating officer. You'll hear from Dr. David Agus, a trusted voice throughout this crisis and a key contributor to CBS News. Kevin Jones, an amazing trailblazer and CIO of the state of Indiana. And you're going to hear from product experts sharing helpful information. You're going to hear about new technology. So tune in, it's gonna be great. Now, why this, why now? Over the past few months and weeks, we've been talking to so many of you. And one thing is common, one thing is top of mind. How do you return to the workforce and reopen safely? Let's face it, for all of us, we're in the midst of trying to figure out how to balance this new normal, how to find our way through. And it's not easy. Speaking personally, I'm at home, I have two little kids, I have a dog, I have a husband that works. I have elderly neighbors, elderly parents, homeschooling expectations, expectations I can suddenly cook every night. And it's not easy, not to mention the number of Zoom calls every day. Now, don't get me wrong. I love family and I love family time, but you can only do so many meetings while your husband works from the other room, your kids are playing 10 feet away, and the dog is barking at the neighbor. True story. You may hear from them later. So for all of us that are in this right now, for all of us in the time of change, in uncertainty, and with a desire to return to the workplace, today is for you. Today is all about talking about how we reopen in a phased approach. We're gonna tackle the tough questions. We're gonna share some incredible new technology that will help be your guide to drive your approach to reopening safely. So buckle up, get comfortable from wherever you are, and with that, please join me to kick us off and welcome Brett Taylor, President and Chief Operating Officer. Welcome to Salesforce Live. So today we're gonna to talk about work.com. This is a platform that's gonna enable every community and every company to reopen safely. And I wanna say thank you for all of you making time out of your day to join us digitally in this brave new world that we're all living in right now. This pandemic is an unprecedented experience for every single person in the world. For every single individual, like Lindsay and I, dealing with our kids running in behind us in every meeting, for every single community, and for every single company. And I don't think any of us can predict exactly what the recovery looks like. But there's one thing I know to be true, which is we're going to get this to, through this together. This is all about coming together to map out what reopening safely really looks like. And we have an amazing day of content to inspire all of you about how you can reopen your businesses safely with work.com. And at Salesforce, we're inspired by trailblazers. These are the people that are leading the way, that's showing uh, all of us what reopening safely looks like, and really taking into account every stakeholder in our community, including vulnerable populations. And I can't think of a better way to start this event than talking to one of those trailblazers, Kevin Jones. So Kevin Jones is an advisor to the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, and his day job is the CIO of the Indiana Department of Child Services. Now, this is an absolutely vital department under normal conditions, but you can imagine how absolutely vital it is in a crisis and a pandemic. And over the past few months, Kevin and his team have provided technology to over 6,500 employees and caseworkers and perhaps more importantly, over 25,000 children in foster care. This is an amazing story. And I wanna say, Kevin, thank you so much for being here with today with us on Salesforce Live. Thank you for allowing me to be here and share with the uh, platform you have available. So Kevin, you know, I wanna start my questions for all of you just about the concept of speed. You know, this crisis came upon us so suddenly and it's hard enough for every company to move quickly. I imagine the public sector it's even harder. You know, when this crisis happened, where did you start in your process to address this problem? So our organization led by uh, Director Terry Stigdon and our Chief of Staff, Eric Miller, is a process first organization. 
And the MuleSoft Any, uh, AnyPoint platform is the keystone that locks our technology and our processes in a tightly coupled relationship in response to the needs of our organization. So beginning with MuleSoft enabled us <clears throat> with the ability to paint a vivid picture of information across the entire enterprise to formulate business intelligence to make evidence-based decisions and provide positive outcomes to children and their families while ensuring the safety of our entire team at the same time. Yeah, it makes sense. I mean, it's all about the data, you know, so you can make informed decisions. I mean, that's, it's a good starting point. Um, you can't start anywhere without great data. You know, but it's interesting though, you know, when I gave your introduction, which is incredibly impressive, you know, I mentioned you're an advisor to the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services as well. So it sounds like a lot of the tools, the technologies, the tactics that you're developing are going to be adopted, you know, all around the country. Um, can you give us uh, a sense of how is Indiana thinking of reopening safely? And then I think for everyone on this broadcast today, how can we learn from that? You know, how can we learn about reopening in the rest of the country? Yeah, our organization natively in, in child welfare uh, focuses on the aspect of risk management with prevention of loss of life as the key focus. That's not unique to our organization, and that, that's consistent across everyone, with risk management being the prevention of loss of life and the prevention of loss of property. Um, COVID-19 introduced the complexity of not just the prevention of loss of life being what we responded to with the shutdown of our system, but the lag effect of prevention of loss of property, which also can lead to the loss of life and the sustainability of that quality of life as well. And the opposite and equal reaction of shutting down the system is reopening the system, but we have to account for the original risk of loss of life and leveraging MuleSoft and Salesforce can enable the organization to capture the data, the information um, that is available to provide our executives and your executives with business intelligence it needs to understand the perpetual state and health of your organization's uh, continuity business. And one of the key factors is that the speed of Salesforce and yourself can provide solutions and respond to changes within, as well as around your organization that will set itself apart and make it a viable solution for COVID-19 response. Yeah, that's incredible. And I love the, the theme of agility and speed in, in every answer that you gave. I mean, I do think all the factors around this recovery are changing so rapidly. Agility is absolutely vital. Um, you know, we change is the only constant right now. Absolutely. You know, so, uh, Kevin, you know, there's you're helping six million residents of Indiana reopen right now, and a big part of that that I think all of us have been reading about in the paper is contact tracing. You know, I want to broaden that a little bit though, and just how is technology playing a part in your plans to reopen these communities safely? Yeah, so our organization generally we practice a uh, lean across our entire enterprise to the point where we've learned to think process first. And the success and transformation of our organization using Salesforce enabled by uh, uh, MuleSoft has permeated throughout our entire organization to our team actually starting to view Salesforce and MuleSoft first, just like we do with our processes. Uh, my CFO and the director of operation who is responsible for the 4,000 plus case ma managers that we have reached out to me and asked, you know, how can uh, Salesforce solve my problem of managing supply chain and distribution of PPE and essentials for COVID-19 across 92 county offices, as well as how can Salesforce solve my challenge of workload management and office capacity with the new social distancing uh, requirements and planning and de-identifying contact information and tracing the 4,000 case managers that still have a requirement to go into families and visit children in their homes or residential placement facilities. And within eight hours, my team was able to develop a Salesforce solution that provided the art of the possible in which we were able to collaborate around and produce a solution that met and has exceeded expectations and is ready to go back with our team as they reiterate the workplace. So it's been invaluable for us to be able to leverage a solution that can change and as needs come up, be able to identify where we've been, where we're going and what we need to do in case we need to respond to a COVID-19 outbreak or just to support us as we do our continuity of business and execution. Yeah, that's great advice. And you know, maybe a good way to end, Kevin, you've got a lot of technology leaders on the broadcast right now. You know, a lot of people who've been tasked to help reopen their businesses um, and or reopen their communities. 
And it's a lot of new problems that I don't think any of us anticipated um, facing a few months ago. What advice do you have for all the techno technology leaders watching right now? So I, I have a theme for my personal life, which is be water. And um, water can take life like a tidal wave crashing on land, or it can supply life like the oasis in the desert. And my suggestion is to be water and the, be the water in the oasis that can supply life to the desert where individuals are looking for answers and no one seems to be able to have those answers. Leveraging a sales force of MuleSolve has enabled me to be able to say to my organization, yes, we can, and versus it doesn't exist and be able to start to identify what do we need to do next. Well, Kevin, thank you so much for being here today. And uh, thank you for all that you do for the state of Indiana and all the foster children around the state. It's so important right now with vulnerable populations being disproportionately impacted by this pandemic. It's an inspiration. So thank you so much for being here today. Thank you too. So everything that Kevin said was an inspiration, uh, really a model for what reopening safely looks like. And that's why we created the work.com platform. It's a set of tools and technologies it's a set of expert advice, and it's a community, a community of all of you, so we can all share all the best practices that we're learning in real time about what does reopening safely look like. And I'm proud to introduce Sarah Patterson, one of the leaders of the work.com initiative, to tell us more about this incredible new platform. Sarah? Thanks, Brett. So just like we spoke with Kevin and just like you heard from Brett, Every leader that we've spoken to agrees, reopening in this new normal is going to be a challenge. And everyone is seeking the tools and advice that they can use to do so safely. And that's why we built work.com. Work.com is a set of expert advice. It's thought leadership, best practices, and data to help businesses and communities reopen safely. And it's also our incredible new work.com product line that we're going to be showing to you in some incredible demos today. This includes the Workplace Command Center. It's a leader's single pane of glass to get all the information that they need to manage reopening. It includes contact tracing apps, emergency response management apps that are live today, tools to help manage employee health and wellness so that you can figure out if your workers are actually ready to come back into the workplace tools to help schedule shifts, because we know that we're not gonna be crowding in elevators and restaurants um, when we come back to work the same way that we were before. And it's tools to help with reskilling your workers for new ways that they're gonna to need to come into the workplace to keep everybody else safe and healthy. And also even for new skills and new roles that they might need to take on for your business. And all of this is, of course, made better by our incredible partners and par partner ecosystem who are building new apps every single day to help extend this. Now, what makes Salesforce unique in providing these tools is that this is all built on the world's number one CRM platform. Never before has the intersection between your employees and customer data and communications been so crucial to the continued operation of your business. Just stop and think about this for a minute. To reopen, you need to not only track whether your employees are ready to return to work and how to reopen, but you need to seamlessly communicate all of this to your customers to let them know what is happening. And then you need to communicate any changes that come up. Let's say that your business fixes appliances in people's homes and there's been an outbreak in a specific area. You may want to proactively quarantine employees who've been to that area and let your customers know that you're not going to be sending people there for a few weeks to try to keep everybody safe and healthy. If you run a bank, a hotel, a restaurant, or a retail store, and anyone, a customer or an employee, comes into it and tests positive, you need to proactively uh, let both your customers and your employees know. And then you need to figure out how to modify your business and your staffing plan. That connection between your employee and customer relationships has never been more crucial. They are truly intertwined right now, connecting everything that you're doing with your employees and your customers with clear communication and transparency is going to help you continue to build that trust with your customers. That's even more crucial for your business than ever before. And that is what we are helping you do on the number one CRM platform that you already use to connect with your customers. You can now seamlessly connect with your employees and customers, all while being able to innovate fast,
scale easily and communicate seamlessly, just like you heard Kevin talk about today. Now we've got two exciting new announcements for you. The COVID-19 data platform available today for free pulls in trusted data from multiple sources like the New York Times, European CDC, COVID tracking project and more right into the work.com command center and the Tableau data hub. This is how we are arming everyone with accurate and reliable data and then bringing it to life through Tableau visualizations, visits to help you make decisions faster. And these data streams, we're curating them and they're available as an open API right from MuleSoft's exchange. So anyone can access it and build experiences with this data. Yes, that is for all of you developers watching out there. And so is this announcement. MuleSoft developed a free dedicated crisis response developer portal as a one-stop shop for developers and IT teams. We've picked APIs, templates, and other pre-built integration assets for you to use for your top use cases, like call volume and patient 360. And we've added them to the portal to help your IT team accelerate the development of critical projects across any app that you're building. And best of all, we are constantly evolving what is in here, making sure we're keeping it up to date with the latest and greatest. And we are creating a collaborative community where customers, partners, and industry leaders are all sharing their assets, their best practices, and their advice. So with that, I would love to throw it back to Lindsay. Sarah, this is awesome. There's so much goodness here. And I want to make sure that our listeners capture the key takeaway. So I'm going to try and underscore what I took away. Give me the thumbs up or shout yes if I got this right. Okay. Okay. Ready? Yes. Work.com is a new offering that includes expert advice, thought leadership, and best practices to help businesses and communities reopen safely. Astro says, you got it. Yes. All right. Awesome. Next one. It includes an all new product line, including command center, contact tracing, emergency response, shift management apps, and employee health and wellness tools, all built on Salesforce, the world's number one CRM. Do I have that right? Right. Astro is cheering you on. You got it, Lindsay. Woohoo. So far, so good. It includes partner solutions focused on reopening. And yes. it includes data. So thanks to MuleSoft and Tableau, you can unlock, analyze, visualize, and act on data all in one place. And leaders can make data-driven decisions faster to respond to the crisis and reopen safely. Do I got that? You got it. Astra's giving you two paws up. Woohoo! All right. Th this is incredible. Let me just take one quick step up. Why work.com and why now? Well, we wanted to make sure that we were helping businesses and communities to reopen safely. We all feel this, right? We are all waiting for the time when we can get back into the office, when we can get back into restaurants, but we wanna make sure that we are doing it safely, safely for employees, safely for customers. And we truly feel at Salesforce that we already help all of these customers communicate seamlessly with all of their consumers, their customers. Well, key to that is helping them to make sure they can take care of their employees. So that's what we are bringing together here. And I think that is what really makes the work.com solutions special for this time. Awesome. Well, I think seeing is believing. I don't know about you all, but I'm eager to see this in action. So I'm going to hand it over to my friend and colleague, Wade Wagner, who's going to share a special demo of one of the new work.com apps, Command Center. Wade, over to you. Awesome. Thank you so much. So the Command Center is a company's single pane of glass for managing the complexities associated with opening back up their businesses and getting employees back to work. It's an operation executive's cockpit for driving your organization through the crisis, resuming business and operations, and emerging stronger than ever before the crisis. From here, you can manage the return of employees to the workplace and make data-driven decisions based on real-time, tailored public data, as well as private data about your companies and employees. You can monitor employee wellness and training information, as well as track facilities preparedness and shift scheduling. Now, based on this information, you can act quickly to trigger the workflows and actions needed in order to resume business operations and reopen locations. And then finally, from the command center, you can integrate data from external systems via MuleSoft. You can access Tableau data visualizations as well as partner apps and solutions. Now for executives, the command center is that single place to get all that information together in one place where you can access real-time information to make those informed data-driven decisions. 
operations, facilities, and HR leaders who are managing the return of the workplace can not only access that data they need to make these decisions, they can also get triggered alerts based on data and information, and again, take action directly from within the command center. And with work.com, employees fill out that employee wellness assessment and can also access previous responses. They're gonna be able to submit availability for shift scheduling. And finally, they can take new trails from my trailhead to help them learn about the new policies required to return to work. So first, let's take a look at what executives can get out of the command center. As I said, the workplace command center is the single pane of glass for leaders like Claire, managers, and anyone involved in returning employees back to the office. It lets leaders get that information and that data together so they can take action. Now, this is not a static dashboard. It's real-time information from across the organization and the situation on, ground, on the ground. And as you can see right here on the screen, automatic alerts, actions, workflows, all are triggered here to streamline operations. Now, at the bottom of the screen, you can see we're bringing the power of MuleSoft and Tableau right into the command center with trusted relevant COVID-19 data at the state, local, and county level. MuleSoft then brings together crucial employee data from HR systems, and along with that COVID-19 data, helps to ensure that it's all consumable in one place. And finally, you're going to see partner solutions from the App Exchange surfaced here in the command center as well. Now, all this comes together so that executives like Claire can stay informed and drive those decisions. Next, let's look at how operation leaders leverage the command center to drive processes and actions across the organization. So operation leaders, that is anyone in operations, facilities, or an HR role who needs to have access to important employee and workplace data, as well as local health data, can use this to determine when and how they can safely return employees to the workplace. With this real-time data, alerts are triggered and ops leaders can take actions right from the command center. So for example, from the command center, Olivia can initiate a deep cleaning of a conference room or an area of the building if an employee becomes unwell after being in the office. Now, all of the employee information is built on top of our employee data model, which is a new set of standard objects aligned to our standards-based and open source cloud information model. and includes all the data about employees, departments, as well as individual incident assessment data. Now, this standard data model makes it easier for you to integrate your employee data from your health, health and HRS, HRIS system. Now, since the command center is built on the Customer 360 platform, you can continue to customize it to suit your operations needs by leveraging low-code tools like Flow and App Builder and to build apps and processes that are specific to your needs. Now, in order to return employees safely to the workplace, organizations need to make sure that their employees are healthy. And this is where the employee wellness check comes in. Now, we built this application in the command center to help assess employee readiness to return to work. From here, operations and HR leaders can understand the wellness status of their employees by location, understand what percentage of their employee population is ready to return to the office. Now, the flexibility of our platform allows us to model this wellness check off of CDC guidelines for what is appropriate data to capture about employees to ensure that, number one, their privacy is respected, but also that operations leaders have the right data to ensure that they remain safe. And of course, all of this can be customized based on the needs of your customer. Now, this employee health data gathered by the employee wellness surveys, we'll see shortly, is stored securely in Salesforce. These surveys are a critical part of taking care of employees. In, in fact, even before employees leave their home, they can use these surveys to attest to their well being. Now, since regular wellness checks will be necessary even once employees return to the workplace, we're making it easy for operations leaders to quickly access pre-built surveys, customize as needed for the organization, and then send right from the command center. Now, see this in action. Let's take a look at the employee's experience. Eddie gets a notification right on his mobile device from his employer, letting him know that it's time to return for his, uh, it's time for his regular wellness check. From these surveys, employees can then assess their health status and attest to their well-being right from their homes. Eddie can complete the survey on his mobile device. And again, we've modeled these wellness checks from CDC guidelines to make sure we're capturing the right information and the appropriate information to understand if they're well enough to return to work, but while also respecting employee privacy. Employees like Eddie are then guided through the survey to complete their assessment, including things like whether or not they've been in contact with others who may have been exposed to the virus. 
Once Eddie submits the survey, that information gets updated back into the command center where operation leads can confirm qualification. And once Eddie is cleared to return to the office, he'll then receive notifications to take the next step. Now today, ensuring that employees have access to the right information and learning opportunities to abide by new social distancing and health and wellness guidelines is critical to keep the workplace safe and healthy. With My Trailhead, which is Salesforce's online learning platform, organizations can quickly launch new digital on-demand courses to help employees get up to speed and skill up in new ways of working. And that's what's happening right here. Eddie is prompted to start his learning on workplace safety. He can see all of his assigned learning modules front and center straight from his mobile phone. And his company, Pacifica, was able to quickly deliver this critical learning with the new My Trailhead pre-built content kits, which makes customizing these templates super easy to fit your business needs. Now, Eddie can see his progress and can complete his learning modules. And all of this learning is gonna help him and other employees to know the new standards that must be adhered to, to ensure that he and others are equipped to return to the workplace safely. Now, once he's done, he's gonna get that badge that says he's completed it. And the important thing is all of this gets recorded and saved back into the system. So the data that Eddie has entered from wellness checks, from his learning progress is now available in the command center so that the HR operations leaders can leverage that information along with tools like shift management to effectively plan and determine what to do next. Now, once Eddie has taken the survey and learning and is confirmed to work, uh, he's going to be scheduled. And here we see the power of shift management to make sure that we're respecting the time and space needed in the workplace as employees come back to work. Here you can see that Eddie has sent a push notification to the mobile app requesting him to select his availability to come into the office. Now, when he opens up the notification, he can see the available shifts and he can simply tap to identify which days he's available to work. Now, when he submits the, the shift management optimization and scheduling engine in the background, uses his availability and matches it to available slots. Now, it's not just taking Eddie's data, it's taking data from all employees and matching their role and function to ensure critical coverage and projects are prioritized. Now, fast forward a bit later in the week and Eddie gets another notification that confirms his new shift at work and confirms when he's gonna arrive at the office. Now that arrival window ensures that we limit the number of people entering the building lobbies and elevators so that we can respect those CDC guidelines for social distancing. Eddie sees the arrival window, in fact, can even quickly tap to confirm or edit. And if he edits the arrival window, that's gonna provide feedback back into the scheduling engine to ensure that we don't have too many people arriving at once. Once confirmed, Eddie's gonna pu be pushed a boarding pass. Now this boarding pass is gonna ensure that security in the building knows that Eddie is approved to return to work and ensure that he's arriving to the building at the right time. So now that we've walked through that employee experience for wellness checks, learning and shift scheduling, let's check back in with Olivia, our HR operations manager to see the solutions she's using to manage employees coming back to work. Shift management enables Olivia to schedule shifts to get her employees back into the office safely. From the shift management console, she can see available employees by department or function, manually schedule shifts, and then quickly optimize schedules with just a few clicks using schedule optimization. After she creates her shifts, she can see which ones have been accepted or rejected. Notifications on the screen allow her to confirm if any shifts violate company policies. She can also make manual changes as needed or reoptimize. Now with shift management, she's able to ensure that once the office opens, it stays open. And one of the ways that she can do that is to stagger the arrival and departure times to ensure that employees enter the office in waves to avoid crowded areas. Now, once she's done, she can check into the command center, see everything updated on wellness, shift status, and learning for the entire team all in one place. And so what you've just seen is with these work.com applications, for data-driven decision-making and workflows in the command center, employee attestation with employee wellness checks, learning with my trailhead and scheduling with shift management is how this all comes together to ensure that we can reopen communities and businesses safely. Back to you, Lindsay. Thanks, Wade. Wow, that was awesome. And a lot of incredible new technology to help businesses reopen safely. But now for some really good news, how we're coming together as a community to help those most in need. Millions of people rely on the United Nations World Food Program for the food they need to survive. And COVID-19 is making conditions even worse. This pandemic could double the number of people suffering from severe hunger by the end of the year. 
To help prevent a hunger pandemic, the World Food Program is stepping up. Since late January, they've dispatched more than 300 metric tons of humanitarian and medical cargo to 89 countries. Today, we wanna to bring the full power of our community to help the world's most vulnerable people have enough to eat during this critical time. So if you can, please go to salesforce.com slash WFP. Again, salesforce.com slash WFP and donate to help feed those most in need. And through July 31st of this year, Salesforce will be matching donations up to a total of $150,000. So please, again, if you can, salesforce.com slash WFP. Now with that good news, pick me up back to Brett Taylor for a conversation with Dr. David Agus, who's been a trusted voice for so many of us during this crisis. Brett, take it away. Thank you, Lindsay. You know, at Salesforce, we've been relying on experts like, like Dr. David Agus to help navigate what reopening safely looks like. And I'm thrilled to have a conversation with him today as all of you map out your own reopening strategy. Dr. Agus, thank you so much for being here today. Oh, it's my privilege. So, uh, Dr. Agus, you know, a lot of people who are watching this broadcast are planning what the reopening strategy looks like. And I think a lot of us are coming to the realization that the workplace we're going back to isn't exactly going to be the workplace we left. Um, you hear a lot of experts like yourself talk about this new normal, this next normal. What does that look like? What does the workplace of the future look like, in your opinion? Well, realize that this virus, you know, is a crafty little creature, right? The biggest problem we have is this asymptomatic spread. 80% of people don't know they have it and they can spread it. Yet we can stop spread. It takes about a thousand particles for me to transmit the virus to you. And so uh, uh, if I do that, you know, a close conversation over 10, 15 minutes can do that. But it takes 10 to 15 minutes. If I wear a mask, I literally block all of the droplets from being spread. So you can imagine a workplace, or I can envision a workplace, um, and I think you guys are actually setting the stage for it, where workers will wear comfortable masks, they will be social distanced, and we will dramatically decrease the amount of spread. You couple that with the pre-screening you're doing, the questionnaires, and I think we could be in a safe workplace environment and get productivity up and have some face-to-face -face interactions. It's not going to be the same as before. We're going to get away from those you know, hundreds of people in a room talking about something. And those kind of things should obviously go through the beautiful Zoom experience. Um, but other interactions, you can be done safely. And that's what's going to happen. I mean, we're at a point now where we're going to open up almost every community. And the key is we do it safely and with data that makes sense. Yeah, that's, that's really interesting. And, you know, in your comments and the demos that we just saw from Wade, you know, employee wellness checks being delivered to their home via their phone every morning, this is a brand new world as it relates to our relationship with our employees. Uh, you know, how do we, how should we think about readying our workforce for this new relationship in this new workplace? So there are a couple aspects to answer that. One is, you know, there's an expression, to get normative behavior change, you need leadership. So your leadership at your country, whether it be Benioff at Salesforce or, or, or you Brett, or others elsewhere, you have to show the behavior that others have to emulate. And you have to normalize that behavior. And so that comes from the top down. You know, employees have been reticent for uh, uh, companies to know about their health. And, you know, it's been, I don't want them to know I have diabetes. They may not send me on the trip to Europe. And so this is a new model where you're, you're actually empowering them with information to do the right thing and enabling them, whether it be to work from home if they need to, or to be tested if they need to. This is not, you know, I want to be paternalistic or, you know, big brother and know what's going on with your health. So it has to be framed in an empowering uh, way and given with data. You tell people what to do, they raise their shoulders. You explain to them the data and they end up doing the right thing. And those are radically different where it's not just what you do, it's how you do that matters. So uh, this pandemic um, has sort of been uh, impacting different regions of the world at different times. Um, there's places where reopening has already started. Um, and I think there's some places where it's working well and some places where it's not working well. What can we learn from the places where it's working well? So, you know, certainly certain countries are doing it uh, differently than others. You know, you have countries like South Korea, you know, Singapore, Israel, that have said, you know, we're going to do this and we're going to do it right. And so when you do it aggressively like that, you actually lose some privacy. So we're very reticent to lose any privacy in the United States. But the whole concept of contact tracing is 
the collective good of the community is more important than my personal privacy. And that's a new way of thinking that's critically important. You, you know, uh, uh, um, we all can't get everything we want. And at some point, we have to lean back a little bit and say, you know, I'm 20 years old. So if I get sick, I'm going to be fine. But I'm worried about grandma. I'm worried about my next door neighbor or my friend who's going through chemotherapy. We have to think about others. So it really is a new world of community. And it's a new world of caring about others. And this is a new model for things. And we all have to approach things a little bit differently with an open mind. And I think that's critical. We're going to see it with vaccines also. People say, I don't want to be vaccinated. You know, the way we got around smoking and we dramatically decreased tobacco use in the country is the argument of secondhand smoke. Everyone said, I have a right to smoke. I have a right to get lung cancer if I want. But when they said, when you smoke, it affects everyone around you, smoking went down by half in the country. And so it's the notion of secondhand smoke. It's the notion about caring about others that really is the message going forward. Yeah, it's a really interesting point. I mean, this is really a collective effort. And especially with public health, we need to all be aligned. And, you know, what I love talking about, uh, talking with you, Dr. Agus, is just a sense of optimism, uh, you know, a sense of we can will this to be if we do this together. You know, so we have, uh, you know, hundreds of thousands, I think even perhaps millions of people watching online. What is some final advice you leave the business, the health, the community leaders that are online today watching this? You know, I, I think that there is light at the end of the tunnel is message number one. And so what I mean by that is there's pilot data now with several vaccine efforts that look very encouraging. So the notion of a vaccine in the fall is a possibility. And it won't be a vaccine for 300 million people in the United States, but it will be a vaccine initially for healthcare workers and high risk individuals. And then slowly expanding over the next six to 12 months to the rest of the country. We have drugs now. The first drug actually has been shown to work and significantly decrease hospitalization. There are a lot more in the pipeline. Once we know we can treat this disease and that not everyone you know, who has a high risk condition will end up on a ventilator or in an ICU, then our shoulders come down and our behavior can change. And we're starting to see it. We saw the entire country mobilize and start to stay at home and start to wear masks when they go out and change their behavior. My hope and prayers are that these behavior changes stick and change. And we're seeing it in some communities that are rolling out. We're not seeing it in others. But again, we need to see leadership doing it. So every leader in a company from the C-suite on down, I want them to show and normalize the behavior of things like wearing a mask and social distancing. You know, the products that you guys have put together with work.com are really amazing to me because they're data driven. They're driven by practices that we know work. And every practice you do actually normalizes all the other behaviors that employees are being asked to do. And so the key is we have to do all of that together to make a difference. Yeah, that's a great way to end it, the importance of leadership. Thank you so much for being with us today, Dr. Agus. Lindsay, back to you. Thank you, Brett, and thank you, Dr. Agus. That was really wonderful to hear. Uh, and again, the sense of optimism was clear, so thank you. Now, we have a lot of goodness left to come in the show. We are about halfway through. We have our very own Elizabeth Pinkham sharing how we're reimagining our own office-based strategy as we look to reopen, and a couple of incredible demos you won't want to miss. But now it's time for a quick break. So grab a coffee, a tea, a quick snack, or just sit back and enjoy some music from the man, the man, the, man, the myth, the legend, LT Smooth.
Thanks, LT. Your music is always calming. Now grab that coffee you got during the break because we are about to head into another special demo. I wanna welcome Jujar Singh, who's gonna take us through. Jujar, over to you. Thank you, Lindsay. I'm very excited to announce that today Salesforce is launching two new products, which are relevant, very relevant to the existing pandemic, which will manage all kinds of emergencies. Those two new products are emergency response for public health, focused on pandemics, and emergency response for public sector, which is for all types of emergencies. Both these products are built on the Customer 360 platform. They are fully compliant with healthcare standards as well as public sector standards, and they have best practices already built into them. So let's take a deeper look at both of these solutions. The first solution, emergency response for public health, is for public sector organizations and public health organizations to manage pandemics, the overall population health at risk. As part of this solution, we manage contact tracing to understand the impact on the community resulting from individual interactions and events. Individuals can be enabled to do self-assessments, and if their symptoms are such, they can be scheduling testing for that. Also, the impacted individuals are constantly monitored so that they can be understood what all is going on with them. And if they need be, they can actually schedule further testing as well. Finally, these impacted individuals may need help also from different emergency service requests. Let's take the case of a single mother who is quarantined, who needs essentials brought to her. This is where our second solution comes in handy. Our second solution, emergency response for public sector is for all types of emergencies, earthquake, disasters, pandemics. As part of this solution, we will generate a emergency program management end-to-end. -end. We provide collaboration tools for people to collaborate with one another, and then also streamline the complete process of a incoming request getting approved, and then actually the emergency service request getting executed in the field and giving complete transparency to everyone in the picture. Finally, the field service workers who have to cater to that single mother who needs essential things brought to her, they can look at everything being delivered to them on their mobile devices by providing those things to that single mother. In order to see both of these solutions in action, I'm going to invite Kishan Chetan, who, will, who is the SVP of product management, for industries who will walk you through this. Over to you, Kishan. Thank you, Jijar. I'm, I'm very excited to speak about how emergency response management in work.com can enable public sector and public health organizations to support and protect their communities during this pandemic. So with that, let's, uh, the, in this current demo, what you will actually see is you will see how uh, in, in this current demo, you will see how ERM will help Jane and Pat, citizens and residents who are impacted by this outbreak. You'll see how Karen, a public health associate who's tasked to manage this outbreak, and you'll see how Emily, a field service worker, it actually delivers care to impacted businesses and individuals. Now let's start with Jane. Jane is not feeling well and she's afraid that she's contracted COVID-19. She wants to get trusted information about COVID-19. So she goes to her government website and quickly gets thorough information. Then she also notices in that website that she can actually do a self-check for COVID-19 right there. She engages with the bot and she's presented a set of questions, starting first with a list of symptoms that she has encountered. So she quickly looks at the list of symptoms and then she selects the symptoms that she's been experiencing, such as a cough, a fever, and severe dizziness. Based on the symptoms that she selected, the bot asks her a follow-up question and Jane realizes that she does not know if she's interacted with anybody with COVID-19. And based on Jane's responses, the bot will have essentially recommends that Jane gets herself self-assessed as well as tested for COVID-19. And she can do that right from this website. 
Now let's look at this from the lens of Karen, the public health associate. Karen logs into her emergency response management application and she starts with a dashboard which gives her a macro picture of the key cases and trends. She can go understand specific impact in specific areas and then she can drill down a little bit more to look at further details of that specific area. So she can understand details of that specific area, such as the number of cases, as well as the key trends within that specific area. What she can also do is she can actually notice key contact tracing status. She can understand testing status as well as triad status. In addition to this, she can also see the residents who are impacted by this within this area. So she goes to the list of residents and she notices that Jane Smith is actually in that list. If you recall, Jane Smith had just done a self-assessment as well as a follow-up test. Karen also notices that Jane's had contacts with others in the community. So she wants to go and manage the risk. She quickly navigates into Jane Smith's record where she has a full picture of Jane Smith's history. She notices that Jane has been diagnosed COVID positive, added to the care program for COVID, and has been monitored and isolated since mid-May. While Jane herself is being managed, Karen is worried about the overall impact on the community, and she wants to contact trace further to understand the impact on the community. She does that by launching the contact tracing graph and going into the contact tracing view. Here, in one picture, Jane can, act, can see very quickly all of the relationships with Jane to other people, as well as places and locations. Karen can see that Jane's household members are actually being monitored, which is great because they're at risk. She also sees that there are other contacts that Jane's had engagement with, but they're not yet being followed upon. So she starts with Pat. She quickly selects Pat, and then she can see information about Pat. But in addition to that, she can actually see that Pat and Jane had lunch on May 10th, which really puts Pat at risk to the point made earlier by Dr. Ibis. So what Karen now does is calls up Pat and starts a guided flow for a clinical assessment. And all of this is based on CDC guidelines. And it's very easy for customers to extend this and change this. She first finds out the relevant information about Pat, follows up, and then finds out the key symptoms that Pat's experiencing. And after that, she can also find out any barriers that Pat has, barriers that would necessitate delivery of services to Pat, such as delivery of food or delivery of medicines, as Jujar was mentioning earlier. Based on Pat's symptoms, Karen recommends that Pat get himself a test and isolate himself. Now let's look at this from the perspective of Emily, a field service worker. Emily logs into her ERM mobile app and her goal is to deliver key services to impacted individuals and businesses. She notices that Pat is her very first visit for the day. She can quickly navigate into Pat's visit and see the key tasks that she needs to do when she goes and visits Pat. She also has specific instructions in the visit instructions to remind Pat that he needs to go in for his next appointment. Emily then starts executing the key tasks one after the other. So she starts with the first task, which is delivering food. She can quickly find out the details and complete the task. Another thing that Emily can do right from here is to provide an update to the entire care team about Pat's being, well-being using Chatter. So that way, the entire care team has one picture of where Pat is. Now, what you saw is an end-to-end -end demo of the power of ERM, all the way from enabling citizens to engage with the government in a safe manner, to enabling a public health associate to manage risks with contact tracing, to enabling a mobile field worker to deliver services to impacted individuals. For more information, go to salesforce.com slash ERM. Thank you, and over to you, Lindsay. Thank you. Well, we know that contact tracing, emergency response management, employee health and wellness is certainly top of mind and critical to any effective reopen strategy. So great to see this technology 
And again, a reminder, if you have questions, want to learn more, head to our work.com, ask the expert room that will open just after this, where we have experts ready to take your questions and go deeper. Now, one common thread in a lot of the conversations I'm hearing these days is that businesses moving or businesses are moving forward with a new orientation. And that's being a platform for change, for transformation. Let's take a look at how business as usual is anything but usual in this great video. This is business as usual. This is business as usual. And so is this. And this. And even this. The business of business has changed, just like everything else around us. Instead of looking out for just shareholders, businesses are now looking out for everyone. The business of business is to make the world better. We can't go back to the way things were. We've got to keep moving forward. Let's build a future that works for all of us. And together, we can make business as usual anything but. Business as usual is anything but usual. I love that. Because let's face it, life isn't usual right now. We're all trying to work, to be there for our teams, to be a mom, a wife, a caregiver, a partner, and we're finding our way through this new normal. But what I love about the message in this video is that through business together, we can all be a platform for change. We can make the world a better place and our actions can have a ripple effect on our communities and our industry. And now is the time to act, to reimagine the business of business. And we have to think about our shareholders and our stakeholders and live with our values. And those values can come through in technology. That's what work.com is. It's a great example of new technology, new products that help drive trust, help drive customer success, employee health and well-being. Now, I wanna pass the baton over to Rachel from Fortune Magazine, who's gonna interview an amazing panel of women to share their, their perspective on how businesses and leaders can reimagine their path forward to reopening. Rachel, over to you. Thanks so much, Lindsay. I'm Rachel, I'm the Deputy Digital Editor at Fortune, and with me today, I have Elizabeth Pinkham and Meredith Jenkel. Uh, Elizabeth is the Executive Vice President for Global Real Estate at Salesforce, and while in the before times, she typically works on Salesforce real estate portfolio and workplace design, now she's been really involved with developing the work.com playbook to help companies get back to business. Meredith is the VP of Marketing and Communications at Poppin, which you might know from their office furniture and office supplies. I have had the pleasure of being in a couple of offices with Pop and Furniture. The lounge seating is definitely my favorite. Um, so we're just gonna talk about what work looks like now. Uh, Meredith, I wanna start with you. For a business that sells products to physical offices, how has Poppin been affected by the drastic shift to work from home and how did you adapt? Very, very quickly. So pretty much overnight, um, we went from being a B2B business where 90% um, of our revenue is coming from interactions that are happening offline. People are discovering us online, but then calling or visiting a showroom. So our five showrooms across the country have obviously been closed since then. And we've had to go back to our original kind of consumer e-commerce roots when we just sold office supplies and to consumers directly online. Um, and so we were all of a sudden messaging um, both a different customer and saying a different message and a different product. So um, almost overnight, we started speaking to everyone as an individual shopper rather than a business, uh, someone who's shopping for their home office. And the message to our business clients changed from let us out at your office to let us help your employees get set up during this time. Elizabeth, you've said that Salesforce employees can work from home for the rest of their or the rest of 2020, some of them, uh, but some are eager to get back to the office. How are you thinking about this gradual return? Well, you are right. We do have employees who are very ready to come back, and we have others who are ready to keep working from home through the end of the year. But really, through the whole thing, we are thinking of this more like a um, almost like a dimmer switch starting to come back on, right? You may have heard that because when we close down the offices as everything was, was getting crazy, 
right? It all happened very quickly. Well, when we come back, it's not going to be like that. What we're working through right now is really a very well um, thought out and intentional plan for how to phase back, you know, into our, we have 160 locations around the world. And we're thinking through each and every one of those locations with its own plan. And of course, guidance, right? Government guidance is one of our, you know, leading beacons about when is it right to come back. And that differs, of course, all around the world. But it is starting to happen. And in fact, next week in Asia Pacific, we're starting to open up a few locations already, which is exciting. I think one of the surprising things for a lot of business leaders, you know, myself included when thinking about my own teams, is how comprehensive these plans really have to be. Uh, there's so many details to consider. Elizabeth, what steps can business leaders take to ensure that they reopen as safely as possible? Well, I've been talking to customers every single day, almost since this started. And what we realized as we talked to each other is that we're all wrestling with the same challenges, right? How do you make sure that the buildings are as safe and clean and optimized for everybody's health and wellness? And how do you think about bringing people back in shifts to start? And then all of a sudden we had this realization that even elevators could become a choke point for being able to use you know, office buildings. So we quickly realized that across all of it, there were these really big data management challenges. And so that's right when we were also beginning to create work.com and actually our own real estate team at Salesforce is going to be customer zero for using work.com. And that's how we are going to manage bringing 50,000 people back to work successfully. So you're absolutely right. It's a very detailed operational plan and it has to be customized for each and every location. Meredith, how uh, is Poppin thinking about this? How are you guys planning on getting people back to work within your own company and helping your clients get back to work? So we're doing something very similar where we're actually documenting our own office reconfiguration um, and to demonstrate how we're thinking about it. We've found a lot of people are making recommendations, but no one can see them yet. So we wanna do it and um, actually get what it really looks like to do this out there. So um, it really starts with a complete change in how you think about the goals of your workspace. So before it was about fitting as many people in there as possible and then creating activity zones where people will be productive and collaborate. And now it's about prioritizing health and safety above all of that. So um, we're really working with our clients on starting with their floor plans and just reimagining their spaces entirely, breaking up bench desks, thinking about how power changes because of that, and also incorporating things like sanitation stands and stations, um, new signage, uh, um, floor decals for um, which direction employees should be walking, not to bump into each other. So it really starts with your layout and the fact that you have completely unique goals from before. There's so much talk about what offices are gonna look like, as you've mentioned. Um, and I think having Poppin really re reinvent this and then share with their clients is really useful because as both of you mentioned, you know, this is something brand new. It's hard for people to even visualize what this return could look like. Are you thinking about this as a temporary thing? Do you see us going back to, you know, our pre-COVID offices at some point? So I think um, a few things have to happen. I think we're going to be in these offices, let's say at least 18 to 24 months. Um, and in that time, hopefully there's a vaccine and also hopefully the economy bounces back and people are hiring more and bringing people back into the office and the desire and need to fit more people in the space is going to return. So I think there's going to be um, something that happens ultimately in the middle. It's not quite what we had before um, where people are kind of packed in, uh, but it is a safer and healthier version of the open offices we saw before. And I'll just kind of add a little bit there, but you know, Meredith brings up a, a huge, big new reality, which is this physical and the social distancing. So, you know, in our studies, and I, I believe Meredith as well, you know, a typical building, you're going to only be able to have, call it 40 to 50%, right, Meredith, of sort of the occupancy that you could before. So that's really turned everything upside down. And then as we just heard from Dr. Agus, right, face coverings are going to be, 
you know, the new normal in the workplace. So that will really change things. How do you read, you know, somebody's facial expressions? How can you connect if you're both wearing these masks, right? And then we're also layering in a lot of like daily wellness check-ins and temperature reading stations and all kinds of things like that to help make our workplace as safe as possible. But it will be different. It will be this new normal. And one of the things we're starting to think about is almost like how Meredith mentioned kind of a hybrid approach. There may be a, a world here where we may not have as many people able to be in the office, but we could be more intentional about those groups that do come back in together. Because one of this aha out of all of this has been we've been able to be so productive working from home. So when you do come into the office, you may wanna only do that a few days a week, but with a specific group or team that you need to kind of brainstorm and still whiteboard with. So that could really change the expectations of the workplace, I think. Definitely. I think one and of the key uh, positives of being in an office is exactly what Elizabeth was talking about, the, the whiteboarding, the brainstorming, being physically in a meeting, you know, that is the part that I miss the most from my own position. Me too. But it's really hard to picture that, you know, in a, in a social distancing world, being six feet away from someone, it, you know, you might as well do it virtually. Meredith, how are you thinking about, you know, collaboration in workspaces in this new normal? Um, so initially we have been thinking about it in terms of, act, of just taking existing furniture and having people space out. And over time, we've started to think about it in terms of what are those new solutions that people need that never really had to exist before. So um, Poppin just launched uh, protective acrylic shields that not only can you put on to retrofit any desk to have, you can put them up in meetings 27 inches to give people a personal space. Another option is decalance around yourself on a conference table or around your chair to allocate personal space for people. So I think you're going to see a lot of um, kind of boundaries set up within existing spaces. Uh, so people will be in the space but are going to have to behave entirely differently and have a different level of awareness of how they're physically interacting with the people around them. Elizabeth, when you're thinking about, you know, as you were saying, we're going to be bringing back maybe 40-50% of people at a time. Maybe we have shifts. What is the best way that we can think about who comes in to work together at what times, if we're, maybe we're alternating. Sure. And this is something that we've been um, uh, challenged with, right, for the past eight plus weeks as we think about it. So as we start to open up our offices, we're, we're beginning with the, the most essential folks kind of looking at our business continuity plan and then ramping up from there and really focusing our, on our own employees to start and then having a later phase down the road where we could welcome back um, customers and prospects and guests, et cetera. But when we think about this, we started thinking about what are those teams and how do we bring people back and give them the space that they need to work together. So this whole world of team shift management, I think is going to become mission critical, honestly, for companies of any size, um, whether it's a warehouse or a restaurant or an office building, to be able to bring people back in the right way at the right time. It has to do with the elevator management, as I mentioned, but it also has to do with being able to just use those spaces effectively. Because, you know, think about it before COVID-19, we all sort of came in, you know, between 8 and 9 a.m. There was a big crush and then there's a big crush at lunch and a big crush leaving the building at the end of the day. We're going to have to think about that in different ways so that we can maintain the wellness and the safety is our number one priority. And I want to squeeze in one last question. Meredith, as you said, you're building up that digital infrastructure and really leaning on e-commerce. Many other businesses have done the same. When we go back to our traditional working environment, how can our digital storefronts and our physical offices work better together after these learnings? Yeah, I think um, it's we're going to be blending um, how we used to work and how we currently work all of the time. And um, 
even for a while now, face-to-face -face interaction is not going to bounce back the way it once did. So um, I think we're going to continue to focus on own channels that don't depend on a major investment up front and um, encourage customers to shop online um, and stay within their comfort level for the time being. And with that, back to you, Lindsay. Now, the point of today was to come together, to have some fun together, give back, learn, and most importantly, to help you on your path to reopening safely. As a reminder, we have question, we have product experts who are ready to answer your questions and go deeper on any of these projects in the products in the ask the, ask the expert rooms. So head there right after this, go deep on any of this that is most helpful to you, and know that the party doesn't end here. Join us this Thursday for our next Leading Through Change event, where Salesforce Chair and CEO Mark Benioff will be interviewing Accenture CEO Julie Sweet on how she's helping her 500,000 person company maneuver during this crisis and helping customers turn massive challenges into meaningful change. That's this Thursday. And we have a bunch of other exciting stuff coming up. We have our MuleSoft Connected Digital event, sharing how you can unlock data to drive transformation and address your critical projects and so much more. So right now, hope you enjoy that. Hope it was valuable. Go dig in with the Ask the, ask the Experts in the Q&A session and have a wonderful day.